Nope. Okay, we're back with Carolyn Smith, and we're looking at meteorites at the Natural History Museum, London. Okay, so this is another specimen from the collection. This is a fragment that weighs about 80 grams. Um, this is a piece of the Tissint meteorite. And again, this meteorite is quite uh, famous. It's quite, uh, it's very scientifically important and it's quite historically important as well. This meteorite fell in Morocco in July 2011. It was a witnessed fall, large fireball was seen, explosions were heard. And then a couple of months later, fragments uh, were, were found um, uh, fairly near, fairly nearby, not that nearby to the fireball, but fairly nearby. You can see, like Barwell, it has the, the fusion crust on it. This one beautiful is crust. The, beautiful crust. Beautiful yeah. crust. This is almost completely, this is about 95, 98% fusion crusted. Mm. This has a number of interesting surface features. You can see this surface is very, very smooth mm -hmm. and rounded, whereas the some of the other surfaces, especially this one, are much more jaggedy, sort of rubbly. Mm -hmm. And what this is telling us is that this is a is an older surface of the what was the the meteor as it's coming through the atmosphere. Meteorites only become meteorites once they land on the ground. Whilst they're still in the air, we call them meteors. And when they're in space, we call them meteoroids. So this is the this is probably a primary or certainly a very early surface as this was coming through the atmosphere. And we can tell that it must have fragmented in the atmosphere, but high up, because we have this rubbly surface, which is getting fusion crusted. It's getting burnt, but it's not smoothing and rounding. Mm -hmm. So that indicates that <clears throat> this is uh, from a larger fragment, which has actually broken up fairly high up in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We can tell that just from the surface properties. Now, why this is an interesting meteorite is because this is a meteorite from Mars. This is one of only about 130 meteorites that we have on Earth, which are actually Martian in origin. And that is a large meteorite for a Martian meteorite. Um, it's it's a sort of about average size. I mean, it's, it's well, there it's, are smaller ones and there are larger ones. It's bigger than the pieces of Gami that I have. Put it, it that yes, way. Yes, yes, probably, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, well, that's the thing. Sigami. <laughs> well, again, one of the things that's interesting. I said about this is historically interesting as well. As I said, there's about 130 Martian meteorites. Only five of those are witnessed falls, mm. and this is the most recent. You just mentioned Zagami, that was the previously the most recent. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons why fall meteorites, so these are the ones that have been seen to fall, and there's about 1,100 of those, mm -hmm. um, are the least contaminated. These have been only sitting around on Earth for you know a few days or a few weeks before they're collected. Um, and so they are the least contaminated of all meteorites. So if you're doing things, for example, if you're interested in studying anything really, you know, like organic molecules or, or anything like that, you want to get your hands on the least contaminated meteorites. And in fact, that's why I'm wearing gloves. We always wear gloves when we handle meteorites to try and minimise any contamination from the oil and the sweat and the salt mm -hmm. on my hands. Because obviously, you know, you can never be 100% contamination free, but you can minimise the damage and the contamination mm -hmm. on the sample. So again, because this one is fusion crusted, this is quite a nice fresh, beautiful, fresh sample. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you.